Hello, uh, this is a short video going through a quick explanation of a simple 8-bit computer, uh, homebrew computer that I've built. Uh, this computer is based on the 80 Mega 1284p PU microcontroller chip. Um, I chose this chip because it's quite high spec for an 8-bit microcontroller. Um, it has a max clock speed of 20 megahertz, a RAM or, or static RAM of 16 kilobytes, a flash memory of 128 kilobytes, and it's a 40 pin chip with 32 programmable I.O. Uh, the system I've built runs Tiny Basic version 15, which is a stripped down version of Basic for simpler applications like putting on an Arduino or other microcontroller. Um, it's programmed using the Arduino environment, um, but before you do anything, you need to put a bootloader on it. The, um, this chip itself, as standard, is not supported by the um, Arduino environment, so you have to put that on it as well um, and do some work with the firmware. To use the Tiny Basic as standard, um, you could, it doesn't really do a lot, and you have to modify it to use any peripherals. Um, I built this little circuit here on a breadboard for um, putting the bootloader on, and then a few modifications to as it is now, just to try it out. And as standard, you can operate the Tiny Basic with it running in your serial monitor. And you can try out simple little uh, functions and instructions, mathematical operations and that sort of thing. Um, but if you want to do anything further than that with peripherals, you have to modify the Tiny Basic, which is fairly straightforward. And I've gone through in detail in my Instructable. Um, as far as hardware is concerned, I'll just give a quick overview of the physical construction. So the... Um, the heart of the system is obviously the printed circuit board, which is effectively a motherboard, uh, which I built, um, I wanted to make the system as built from scratch as far as possible, as much homemade as I could. Um, so I used, uh, I built my own PCB using the toner transfer method and press and peel. I found this worked for me. Um, I did a lot of trial and error to get it there. The, um, the board is quite big for a homemade PCB and using the heat transfer, toner transfer method and a, just a normal domestic iron, one of the challenges I had was getting a, a even heat distribution across the board, uh, which I got in the end. Um, again, I, more detail of that is in my Instructable. So that's the, the top and then this is the base. Um, just a quick tour of the PCB. So um, here we've got the 1284p PU uh, microcontroller unit. That's the sort of master processor of the system, which contains the basic um, plus one or two other things, uh, like for running the keyboard, etc. And then there's effectively a slave controller here, which is the Nano that connects to the, uh, the um, 1284 through a serial bus and that basically displays any characters on through this serial connectors and uses a TV out sketch to connect to, to the RCA connection on the back here. That just prints out anything, any characters that it sees on the serial bus. Um, we've also got at the bottom here some IO headers so this is eight digital I.O. headers and this is eight um, analog I.O. headers. So you can put external connections onto the, um, the computer, like LEDs um, as an output. You could have switches as an input, um, various other things. So it's quite handy if you want to do some experimentation because this uh, basic is really, really simple to use and um, you get instant feedback once you've done it. This is a connection here is for a piezo buzzer. So um, there's a tones function in uh, in Tiny Basic. So I used one of the outputs which you set up when you, when you modify the compiler code. Um, you set up the port that you want to use for that or the the output pin. Um, then here 
we've got the keyboard which is a PS2 connection which comes out on the side here which is a standard PS2 uh, keyboard connection we've got what else have we got this connection here which is obviously the RCA connection for the monitor or TV um, a little power light here when you switch it on so that's it on uh, reset connection here just a simple spring return button uh, in the top right hand corner here is where the power supply comes in it's a very simple power supply just with a voltage regulator and a couple of um, 10 microfarad capacitors to a uh, smoothing capacitors now I would change the power supply if I was to build this again and put some filters on it um, because it, it runs fine as it is because it runs off a battery connection so it's obviously a very clean power supply but I did find there was glitching when I ran it off a bench power supply um, probably caused by ripple um, we've also got uh, this SD card for storage there's two ways you can store programs you've got the SD card which you can store multiple programs on written in basic and you've also got the EEPROM on the microcontroller chip itself which stores one program um, both of which on the compiler you can set up to run that program on boot up so either the SD card or the EEPROM program if you choose to um, you can run that straight from boot up I don't do that but it's an option if you want to um, there's a header here right in the middle of the board for an FTDI connection uh, this enables you to um, uh, connect to the uh, microcontroller through the FTDI um, if you want to say put a new version of basic on it or do debugging but that is connected through the same serial bus as the nano so this switch here disconnects the nano from that serial bus so that when you program it doesn't um, they don't work against each other um, then the case the case is made out of three millimeter plywood which was cut out using a laser cutter in um, the hack space which i attend in norwich the um, i designed that using a simple 3d cad program and then just cut it out of a single sheet of plywood and it slots together nicely um, the pcb is mounted on a bracket that was 3d printed which you can see underneath as well which has got a square cut out so I can see the underside of the PCB that was printed on an Ender 3 Pro as was this bracket for the um, SD card shield this top section here is a folded piece of aluminium sheet um, just done on a sheet metal break uh, one of my own um, then I've got a sort of piano hinge here and a thumb screw here to hold the uh, clear perspex top and then I have a clear perspex base with some feet on it um, right I'll show you the output so we I use a car reversing camera uh, screen as a monitor because it has the right connection so that just plugs plugs in the back here and that just needs a 12 volt supply as you'd expect for a vehicle um, then the keyboard um, that's a standard PS2 connection it connects in here Let me bring it a bit further forward um, then if I switch it on it should boot up really fast so you get the um, boots up straight away tells you how much um, memory you've got free and how much um, uh, EEPROM space you've got left so with it booted up, obviously it's the obligatory Hello World program. So 10 print hello comma world. Then 20, obviously go to 10. Then if I do a list, that shows the program. Then I do a run. That will then print out endless hello worlds. So 
So then we press the reset button, it will then reboot the machine. So that then we're back to square one. Now, um, obviously, you can do more complex programs than that. So I've done a couple of programs. So the first one I've got stored on the SD card. So um, if I type in load primes one dot bass. This is a simple program for calculating primes up to a user defined um, number. So um, if you want all the primes up to 100, it will find all of that. It's, it's like Estophanes Civ, I think is the right pronunciation. I'm not sure about that. So if I do a list of this program, that shows you every that runs through the program, shows you what it is. Now, Tiny Basic has a very limited set of instructions and it doesn't have a mod or modulus, which um, gives you the remainder value of a division, which is a very useful calculation for when you're working out primes. Um, so you have to do that mathematically with this version of Basic. So write your own formula for working that out. So this is the program. So I then tap in run. So it says, tell me your prime number limit. So I'm going to say 20, press return, and that gives me the eight prime numbers starting at two and ending in 19, the um, uh, under 20. So we can do that again. So run, so we could say 50 this time. So it takes a bit longer, 15 prime numbers ending at 47. So uh, that is quite a, if you, if you put bigger numbers in, it does take a lot longer. So it, I'm not going to do it, but if you put a thousand, um, I found it took about five minutes to calculate all the prime numbers up to 1000, which is, I think, 168 prime numbers. Um, so that's one program. So if I'm going to turn it off and on again, I don't need to do that. I could have just pressed reset. There's another program what's saved on the EEPROM, which is to load that, we do eload, and that's all we need to type in, and then press return, and then if we do a list. So this is another program. This is a music, piece of music, um, to demonstrate the output from the piezo buzzer. And in this program, I used a series of uh, go sub commands, which are subroutines to play different sections of music. Uh, the piece of music is loosely based on Jean-Michel Jarre's Oxygen, um, very loosely. Um, so if I just run that, you can hear it play. So if you look, um, the tone is actually a frequency, um, which is which what I did is I went through the sheet music for the piece and converted the musical note into a frequency in hertz. And then I worked out the note duration and the time signature. So I roughly knew what it would be, but then adjusted it by trial and error. But um, so this is a, sort of first go at doing this computer. I'm quite pleased with it. It works really, really well. But obviously I'd make some changes as you'd expect. But um, hopefully I'll do some more projects and put them on YouTube. Thank you for watching.